So I've my command prompt here. I've browsed to d colon backslash graphics pad slash graphics pad where this project is kept. And I just love folders that are subfolders of other folders with the same name. That makes me so excited. Thank you, Visual Studio. The idea Visual Studio is doing is this is the solution folder. This is the project folder. But uh, alas, it's it's fishy. Anyway, I'm going to list the contents of the directory as far as me widget is concerned. Me widget dot star. The star means ignore everything out here just give me anything if you know regular expressions that's the idea there if you don't don't worry about it star means everything so i get me widget dot h me widget dot cpp we're used to cpp files having one header file associated with them this q object macro adds a bunch of declarations in there in fact if i hover over it with my mouse it goes way off the recording area but you can kind of see that the q object macro expands to like meta object const and Q metacast const char star it adds all these function declarations in here, but no definitions. There's no body to any of these functions, and these functions are necessary for Qt's signal and slot mechanism to work with our widgets, so we can know when those slider values change. So we need to add the definitions, and we can add the definitions by hand, but that's painful. Instead, we're going to use Qt's mock program. If you look in whatever install of Qt you've installed, and somewhere hiding in there will be a mock M O C. Dot exe mock stands for meta object compiler i believe and what it does is it looks at the header file here and generates the appropriate compilation unit code let me show you i've actually put mock on my c colon backslash just because i like it there that's kind of dirty but but i like it handy i'm going to say hey mock me widget dot h and what mock does is it looks for the q object macro and the slots and all that stuff and it'll generate code look at all this code that mock.exe just generated and essentially it's adding metadata here. Warning, all changes in this file will be lost. Yada yada yada. I don't want my code to print to a, a console because that's kind of useless. I actually need it to go to a file. So I'm going to hit the up arrow. And the up arrow says, hey, mock that thing again, me widget.h, but redirect the output to me widget underscore mock dot cpp. It's going to be a compilation unit. I add the underscore mock as a convention just to show that that's a uh, auto-generated file created by mock. I hit enter. You'll notice that we didn't get all that output anymore. And now I can go over here to Visual Studio, Control Alt L, GUI components. No, not GUI components. Me GL window. Let's refresh this. Refresh and me widget underscore mock dot cpp comes in. I'm going to include that in the project. Double click on it, and here's all the code that mock dot exe generated for us. You can see here. Ah, oh, meta string, meta widget, slider value change this is here because we said that's a slot and it's using some code here to say hey fire that slot off anyway yada 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 uh we can close that now let's just build make sure we build let's build that and see if we build we get a linker error because in me widget dot h we said we're going to have this function but we didn't actually implement that function so i'll copy that go over to me widget dot cpp and we'll just drop it right here. Grab this, copy, paste, implement that. Control Shift B. Build started. Build succeeded. We're good to go. Control F5. We're good to go. So there you go. We've connected the slider. When the slider changes, when the slider emits the signal, then our this object slider value changed will be invoked. In fact, let me just say QDebug. I'm not sure if I've shown you QDebug yet or not, but I'll say slider value changed. Oh, I don't need to do end line. QDebug already puts an end line in there. QDebug, this is just a simple debug function that QT supplies. I'll just pound include it up here. QT slash QDebug. And this function returns a stream. Oops, sorry. This function returns a stream. I can use the stream insertion operator to insert this text into the stream. The stream goes to the console by default, but you could have it go to a file or whatever. But uh, let's build this, run this, bring the console window in the background here. Slide these sliders around. And you can see we're getting output now. Okay, as the slider slider values change, we get output saying, "Hey, they change, they change." So what we want to do instead of saying change is we want to say a uh, me gl window repaint but we don't have a me gl 
a window pointer. So I'm going to go to me, G, me widget here. Let's add that. And I'll say it's a me GL window pointer. I'm going to forward declare this class me GL window. And I'm going to forward declare it because I don't want to bring a big ugly pound include in here if I don't have to because the header files get spread amongst several compilation units. Again, this is just kind of a lab thing though. Maybe I could get away with doing that. Ah, too much of a debate for a scratch pad project. I'll forward declare this. And that's legal because I'm just declaring a pointer and it doesn't matter if you're a debug slider or a GL window, the compiler knows the slide, the size of a pointer. And so here's four bytes, four bytes, four bytes, four bytes. The compiler's happy. But in the compilation unit, I actually have to define this which we do right here. Here's the pound include, and this brings in the definition. So when the compiler sees this call repaint, it knows that me a GL window has a repaint because that's declared in this header file there. But obviously we need to say right here, me GL window uh, gets new me GL window. We need to initialize that pointer right here. Now I can say me GL window repaint. Control F5, build that, run that. And you can't tell, but as I slide these sliders around, this window down here is repainting. Of course, it's repainting the same thing over and over again. What we need is to use the values in these sliders to set the light position, this nice colorful cube here. We need to set this light position based off the values in these sliders. So that's what we're going to do in the next video is connect these sliders to the light position. So as I slide this around, you'll see the light position change. Uh, real time without having to recompile every time I want to move the light. So there you go. On to the next video.